Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Commissioner's Court. If you will, let's begin with a prayer and a pledge of allegiance. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another beautiful spring day. We thank you for a wonderful Easter weekend, and we just thank you, Lord, for uh, what is behind that celebration and the gift of your Son to die for our sins. We just ask you now to preside over this meeting, guide us through each and every agenda item that we might make decisions that are in the best interest of this county. We thank you for our citizens. We thank you for our businesses. We thank you for our schools, for our leadership within this community and within this city. We just pray for each and every one of them. We pray for those that are here with us today and just thank you for their presence. We just again ask now that you would preside and guide us through each item here. We pray for our service men and our service women for your continual protection over them at all times wherever they may be in christ's name amen, amen. <clears throat> i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation under god indivisible with liberty and justice for all <clears throat> Today is March 28th, 2016. This is our second meeting of the month, our special meeting. We appreciate you coming today. I'll begin with item one, public comments and or requests for information on non-agenda items in accordance with section 551.042 of the Open Meetings Act. Is there anyone that would like to address the court at this time? All right, moving on, item number two, consider and possibly approve minutes from our March 14, 2016 regular meeting two weeks ago. Does I can make motion to approve minutes. Thank you, Commissioner Hinton makes a motion. Second. Second by Commissioner Parker, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item number three, we have this morning with us Thomas Kirsch. Am I pronouncing that right, Kirsch? That's pretty close. Pretty, how do you pronounce it? Well. Curse. Anyway, we have uh, Mr. Curse here with us from Texas Association of Counties, TAC, and he wants to remind us of the opportunities and benefits of the risk control reimbursement program. So I'll turn it over to you, Mr. Curse. Thanks for coming up today. Thank you, Judge Lee. Honorable members of the Commissioner's Court, uh, as Judge pointed out, uh, my name is Thomas Curse, and I'm currently uh, one of your law enforcement consultants for the Texas Association of Counties. In my prior life, I was a former, I'm a former sheriff down in Nacogdoches County, and, and uh, just to your credit, as I would always tell them, I really don't care how you say it as long as you vote for it. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> but uh, it is my privilege, and, and I had an opportunity actually last week to visit uh, with the sheriff on this, but TAC has come out with the opportunity for uh, a 100% uh, reimbursement grant and by 100% uh, I mean there is no matching fund requirement but it is pure reimbursement uh, it is not guaranteed funds it's a competitive grant but as you go through the package that I put before you and, and uh, Commissioner and I think mentioned that uh, Todd Murph uh, Todd uh, spoke to you at the uh, conference in Galveston about this the deadline on there will show uh, July the 1st but because it is a competitive grant, TAC has allocated $750,000 total to this program. There's no federal or state dollars in this. It's, it's TAC money trying to help eliminate uh, either known or uh, projected risk opportunities, whether that's employee safety issues, uh, the overall safety of your employees, you know, reducing workers' comp claims, reducing liability claims, uh, protecting your county employees here at the courthouse and the other job sites or protecting your county structures. One of those three things uh, is, and it can apply to more. You can divide the program into multiple uh, types of grants if you wanted to say just hypothetically uh, address, you know, a metal detector for courthouse security screening and try to do uh, some other things like uh, 
traffic safety vests for road bridge employees or even steel toe boots for you know, those kind of things. Uh, anything that's likely to help eliminate or reduce risk. There's a little more than $18,000 uh, that Tyler's County is entitled to apply for for non-law enforcement. And then there's a little over $6,700 strictly for law enforcement use uh, that the sheriff can apply for with the court's blessing as well. Uh, but I would encourage you, if you're interested in this, it doesn't have to be in the next week, but don't wait until that July 1st deadline because uh, they will start going through the applications more or less in order they receive them. And if the money's allocated, you may have the best application in the stack, but if, if the money's gone by the time they get to you, uh, well, you know, then at least for this year, it would already be out. So I do encourage you to, if you're interested, to consider that. <coughs> I gave you a packet in that packet there are the application forms, a little bit of information about the brand. And then on the back, this is not an all-inclusive uh, list of items, but it's just an example of some of the types of projects that the court might want to consider uh, using the money for. And, you know, I, I've had a uh, court's request quite a number of different uh, scenarios, uh, and, and especially a lot of focus has been on employee safety in and around improve the structural impact of the courthouse. I've even had some uh, that have asked if they could use it to help install, you know, bulletproof or re bullet resistant glass for the clerk's offices, things like that. Those things I think will qualify because they need one of those three conditions uh, for the grant. Whether or not you get awarded the grant, I can't say. Also, uh, I really feel like this will be something that TAC will try to continue in the future, but much like your county budget, we work on an annual uh, budget year and we can't promise, you know, budgeted funds uh, into next year. Our, the difference is our budget uh, runs uh, on the calendar year, and so we won't know until sometime after January 2017 whether or not there will be uh, this type of opportunity again next year although I would uh, foresee that may be coming. At this point, rather than me just rambling on, if there's any questions or, or uh, thoughts that the court has, I'd be glad to entertain them. This would be something that we could apply for before actually incurring the expense, as opposed to we have to submit paid invoices at the time of the application. Yes, sir, that is correct. And part of the reason that the time frame is structured as it is, uh, we recognize that not every county in the state operates on an October 1 fiscal year, but about 85% of the counties do. And so we've structured the grant application process in such a way that you should be notified. The, the, the deadline for us telling you whether or not your grant has been accepted would be August 1st. And we've done that uh, trying to give you the opportunity to know ahead of time if your grant's accepted so you could actually budget those funds uh, in the upcoming fiscal year. And then uh, you in the packet, it will explain that the time frame for submitting receipts is actually December the 1st. So you have to have the money spent uh, if you're approved by December the 1st. But you would know ahead of time whether or not those funds are received. And then tax deadline to, to reimburse you would be uh, no later than January the 1st. And again, part of that is to coincide with our uh, fiscal operating year. Uh, so that we're spending those monies in the years that they're budgeted. Tell us from your experience, what typically, where are the most, I don't know about quantity, quantity wise, but uh, dollar wise, where rank us some of the higher loss areas? I, w I would think it'd be in the heavy equipment usage, but I don't know. The judge, uh, almost, in, in almost every county, or at least the, the most frequent exposure that we see is slips, trips, and falls, but that's not always necessarily the highest dollar cost. Uh, so uh, there's a number of projects. If you have a problem area in or around the courthouse, or even in one of your barns or the annex where you know maybe there's uh, an uneven uh, spot in the entryway, just a very slick spot when it rains or something, you could write a grant or write into the grant 
uh, to utilize maybe redoing that surface area, the, you know, something like that. For heavy equipment, it is uh, one of the larger uh, types of claims dollar-wise because uh, obviously when there's an injury there, the potential for it to be severe is extreme. And so you'll see some of the projects there. Uh, a lot of the counties that we deal with don't necessarily have a requirement for their employees to have steel toed boots. Uh, and, and maybe we see a lot of those operations or even a lot of slips uh, in the sheriff's office, for example. Uh, we wouldn't buy the sheriff's steel toed boots, but we might would consider a, a rubber sole footwear because of the slips and falls on the jail surface floor, something like that. Uh, so uh, the difference would be if you submit a grant for something like that, you would need to uh, ahead of time research out the funds. And obviously, if, if you could buy steel toed boots from, say, Red Wing, just for example, for $75 a pair or $100 a pair, well, that's that's what tax would reimburse And that's just one example. It could be, uh, we've got a lot of counties that don't even have reflective safety vests. And when you're that close to cars going up and down the highway, that, that's certainly a necessity. Uh, I've even suggested to some counties, and you don't have to wait on this either if you don't, but if they have our hats, fine. I've seen some counties that have our hats but didn't have any reflective material on it. So you don't necessarily have to replace the hard hat, just put in there you want to buy some uh, reflective tape to stripe the hard hat with or you know, something like that. But you can use it for multiple projects. As I said, you're, you're entitled to apply for a little over 18000 So you may sit down and, and figure up that, well, we can do these things for road and bridge, and that's only going to cover about $6,000 worth. Uh, and so what else can we apply for with the other 12 to benefit from backup cameras or certainly uh, the, the beeping uh, requirements for you know your heavy equipment when they're backing up? Those kinds of things would, would certainly work as well. I've already talked with the sheriff uh, on the types of projects he could apply for, but those range widely from everything from bulletproof vests to body-worn cameras to you know equipment in the jail, uh, things of that nature. Uh, and then all the way down to uh, if you need lightning rods to help protect the building or if there's some particular, with all the rain we've had, you know, some particular areas uh, in your facilities that are flooding, uh, you know, there may be some, some diversion uh, tactics that you can apply for there as well. So it, it, it really is a broad spectrum. Uh, I would just encourage you, when you start trying to blend the different types of uses, maybe break those into uh, you don't have you can put them all on the same application but break them into different projects because you might wind up getting one project approved and maybe not the other part of it that will instead of an all or nothing time okay you had mentioned uh, metal detectors in the courtroom i associate that more as a security issue but you're saying that could be something that could qualify that does qualify the, the the second requirement is to protect the health and safety of your employees and the courthouse security measures or, and doesn't really have to even be in the courthouse, again, the annex or, you know, your JP offices, uh, anywhere that you substantially deal with the public, there's potentially a problem, right? So uh, those things uh, certainly would come under the scope of the health and safety of the employee, although it's not strictly reserved for uh, security measures. Security measures certainly do fit into that. Okay. Sheriff, you think you can come up with enough projects to take care of that 6,000? And, and, and I'm, I'm being serious. I mean, have you already thought about some, some items that you can? Okay. All right. You know, we I see on here defibrillators. We we've, we've recently gotten a defibrillator over there at the uh, JP office. We don't have one in this building. We don't have one in the annex. You know, that jumps out at me. We don't have a metal detector for this courtroom. We do have them at the other two courtrooms. That's something that we need to proceed forward with. And I haven't even thought about what what you you fellows might need for your for your crews. Um, but let's certainly not pass up on this opportunity and I'll ask you in the next couple of weeks to maybe jot down some ideas so that we can decide uh, 
how we want to allocate, again, up to $18,000. Your uh, exact sum is $18,381. Now, you can, you can spend more than that, but that's the amount tax would reimburse you on, uh, for non-law enforcement. Okay. Uh, and the courthouse security measures would not be considered part of the law enforcement unit. Okay. And then the sheriff's office would be entitled to $6,704. And the quicker we can submit this, the better our chances. Yes, sir. Okay. That's my belief anyway. <laughs> well, I, I would agree. Uh, uh, I mean, part of it is we want you to have the opportunity, to, if you need to even need in workshops or whatever, you know, that you have time to, to vet some of your ideas and, and structure them. Uh, because they, they, I'm not saying that they're not going to look at uh, comparative references, but uh, if you're way down in the stack and the money's gone, you know, then obviously it doesn't matter how good your proposal was for this year. Uh, but at the same time, uh, don't think that you, I, I've had some uh, other counties ask, well, if we add more money to that, does that improve our chances? And I want to point out that while you committing additional dollars certainly may enhance what you're able to do with the funds and make it a, a even more robust application in terms of whether you get approved for the grant or not uh, the matching dollars or additional dollars is not the, really a consideration because we don't we're trying to return these dollars to help you help your employees and improve the overall safety of the county and some counties that can't afford to add additional funds, you know, we didn't want to penalize them for that. So, so uh, you can pick or choose whether you just want to limit your projects to the 18,000 or whether, you know, you want to just try to add that into additional costs that maybe you're looking at as well. All right. Commissioners, questions? Uh, what I was looking at is we're, we're getting at that time of year where we've, we've used our safety vest that we have yes sir. our safety glasses uh, especially with trees cut down cutting up and stuff like that uh, you know I know I need some combs and I know I need the vest and, and uh, just getting close to get some safety glasses too because they, they're really they have prevented a lot of bad things from happening a absolutely what about uh, if you you know this we had a lot of washouts. Yes. And I ran out of signs, road close signs, uh, uh, washed out on the cupboard or something like this. Need to put something up there. Uh, the, does that pay for that too? The signs. I, I honestly, uh, and I wish I had a better answer for you. I, I, I don't know that j just signage would work. Uh, a barricade uh, might. But again, you have to be able to articulate in the application how that use, that sign or that barricade is going to assist you in uh, eliminating a, an employee injury or a liability concern, you know, a lawsuit issue for the county, uh, or to protect your, your employees, the health and safety of those employees or the facilities, and not necessarily the county road. But I will also you know, point out that, as you know, if you were needing cones, if you were needing uh, signage, for example, and you're able to buy the, the vest and some of the other things out of these funds, well, then the dollars you would have otherwise spent for those, maybe you could divert to the signs. Now, I'm not going to tell you to not put the signs in there if you want to try. I'm just afraid that the signage itself, unless it's like signage talking about security measures. Now, a road close sign that's mobile, it very well may work because, you know, as you said, if there's a flood issue or a tree down, that's something that's not uh, there every day. Obviously, there's a, a definite that's safety. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. And, and I do think that some of those portable barricades like that with some reflective material, because we know those that anything reflective is, is not cheap. Uh, and, and that very well may uh, fit under there. Is there a, 
I'm, I might have misunderstood. You said there's no state or federal money. This money comes from TAC. Yes, sir. This is How this is something that TAC. The, it, it's actually coming. You know, TAC, and, and I. I served on TAC boards when I was in uh, office, and, and I've been a part of the operation for a long time. But you don't realize it until you get there. TAC is actually made up of multiple uh, layers, and this is through the risk management program. This is the the your fund dollars are based on. Now there's a cap, but but your fund dollars are are based on. Uh, the number of employees you have, the size of the county, the number of policies that you hold, and the amount of dollars for those policies paid into uh, the risk management system. So the law enforcement liability, uh, the, the county's general liability and property liability and auto liability and all those things, uh, they, I, I don't know what percentage it was, but they came up with a calculated percentage to apply to that to basically determine how many dollars uh, they were going to reimburse. But the, the thought concept behind it is we're trying to be proactive or at least help you be proactive because we know that if we can actually return some of these dollars to you and, and, and you use those to lower these claim issues, well then those are going to reduce the claims that you're having and that not only helps you reduce the direct cost but obviously you keep your employees healthier you keep them working and so the activity stays at you know a higher level and, and that's the objective behind the program did, did i answer your question yeah okay so we're not competing with all 254 counties. We're competing with those that do business with TAC. And this is TAC's way of, of investing some money in hopes that it pays back the pool some money in the form of less claims. Yes, sir. And, and that, is, that is correct. Uh, it's every county, you know, as you know, can pick and choose. We have probably close to 200 of the 254 counties in the state that have almost all their their coverage is into the pool. Uh, and so those counties uh, certainly are going to to probably have a higher dollar threshold. But at the same time, a larger county, uh, you know, just for example, a great county, a, a Brazos County, a Smith County, uh, by the, the number of employees and the dollar amounts that they pay in for those, uh, certainly is going to drive that threshold up as well. A, uh, Harris County, they're, they're not even going to be in the mix here because they self-insured on everything they do. You know, so, so you're not competing against those. But uh, being a, a former county employee, I know how precious, how precious dollars are. And, and I know to many of our counties, even a few thousand dollars can make a world of difference in some things that ordinarily you just wouldn't find the, the funds for at the end of the budget. Okay. Philip, Jimmy, any questions? I have nothing to Okay. Ask. Well, again, I would ask you all to let's, let's strive to put together some ideas within the next couple of weeks so that we could put together a request here as quickly as possible and get in line for these funds. And, Sheriff, if you'll do the same thing, we'll, we'll, we're going to try to take advantage of this, uh, Thomas. And, again, we appreciate you coming. And yes, I'll uh, contact you if any questions it, come yes, up. Yes, please feel free to contact me or uh, Todd Kiesel, either one. Uh, we'll be glad to, to answer any questions that we can. And even if we have to relay those questions and, and get an answer back, I'll be glad to do that. Right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Item number four is uh, consider and possibly renew copier lease with TLC office systems. Currently, we're paying uh, about $1,964.11 in the way of lease payments, and I cannot uh, renew these leases without approval. These are 60, 63 months, is that right, Carrie? 63 month and Carrie is here with TLC in case we have any questions but just in summary I'll give you my overview here we've got uh, let's see one to the total number of machines that this includes is what is it eight or not sure yeah go ahead 
A this is a machine in the tax assessor's office. Aud auditor, I'm just going to run down your list. The auditor's office, judge's office, treasurer, county attorney, JP, two, and maintenance barn. Is that right? Correct. Total seven machines that are obviously. And in Kerry and my uh, talking, Kerry is going to actually be replacing some of our old owned machines with. He's going to actually replace those. The leased machines, how many of these will be updated to a different machine as part of this lease renewal? So the auditor's office, uh, judge lease office, treasurer, county attorney, JP2, Judge Dyke, and maintenance bar, all of those machines will be replaced with machines that are brand new that meet their needs. I went by each location and qualified each and every single one. The other thing that I did, um, what I try to do at least once every six months is go by and see everybody. Um, so I went by the other locations. Um, those locations include uh, Judge Ralston's office, Veterans office, Elections office, and DPS way, and also juvenile probation. I went by business manager JP1, 3, and 4, district clerk, both county clerk's machines. They have one in the back and one up front and then also uh, visited with Judy at the tax assessor's office. So what I found when I did my audit of the, the county was that uh, Judge Ralston had a machine that was over eight years old. And as you can imagine, the older these machines get, the more we have to go by and, re and replace parts and do service on them. Also, the more we have to do that, the less effective it is for Judge Ralston to use the machine because it breaks down more often. This was the case in four different offices, Judge Ralston's office, the Veterans Office, Elections Administration, and Juvenile Probation. All of those places have machines that are over eight years old. So what I decided to do, or our company decided to do, was instead of just replacing those seven machines that we talked about earlier, um, at the judge's location, for example, what we're going to do is we are going to replace those machines, but since those machines are only a little over, I mean, four and a half or, you know, 50 something months old, they're a lot younger than those four machines at those four locations I just mentioned. I'm going to, our company's buying them from the leasing company, and we're going to donate them for those newer machines to Judge Ralston, Veterans Office, Elections Office, I'm sorry, Elections Administration, and Juvenile Probation. And those are machines that we currently own, that we have well, bought somewhere in the past. Leasing, but those machines that we're replacing the, uh, the county owns because they are over eight years old. Correct. Okay. Now we're going to be doing this and we're also lowering your budget. So you'll be going from paying $1,964 a month to 1900 and I think it's 10 cents. Yes, it is. So one, we're replacing the seven machines with machines that they need and with the same capabilities. But then we're also donating four machines to the uh, Ralston's office, Veterans office, Elections Administration, and Juvenile Probation. And I would point out when I went by and talked with them, they didn't necessarily ask for anything because they knew that their budgets were their budgets this year. They really didn't have, they all wanted new equipment and they would love for me to donate something, they said, but they really didn't have the budget in place to get something different because, well, their budget's already their budget. So what we're doing is we're taking all these 11 machines and doing what we're doing, and we're actually reducing the cost of the county. We're not increasing costs at all, so there won't be any budget that needs to be increased on anyone's departments. And you're able to do that because in return you get some more modern equipment that requires less of your time in the form of repairs and maintenance. Correct. Just like with the car, uh, the more miles you put on it, the more maintenance uh, is on it. Also, the more often it breaks down. Well, with, especially with these eight machines, or the four machines that are over eight years old, we do see them more frequently. And as you, anyone can imagine, an example would be the elections admin. Um, there are specific times of the year uh, that that machine really gets used a whole lot, and it's really problematic for them to be down. So we come out during those times quite often to see that machine, which costs us a lot of money. So by me donating uh, a machine to, in that respect, it actually saves me money in the long run because I don't have to see that machine as often. But in the, the other side of the coin for them, they are a lot more productive because they don't have their machine breaking down so long because it's a newer, more modern, uh, faster, and better machine. 
and I will say that the last time we, we did this, we introduced some new technical capa technological capabilities to some of these machines that weren't previously being utilized. And with TLC's help and with KBRO's help, I believe every office that needs internet connectivity, fax connectivity, we got more features than before. And that, that was a rather time intensive uh, process, getting all those machines properly functioning, coordinating with the computers in each of those offices, and those are in place now. And we'll be maintaining the same brand uh, and virtually a, a piece of equipment that's very similar to what each department is used to as far as functionality. That's correct, and on top of that, the unique thing about the seven machines that we're replacing is all I really have to do to make those work with the existing infrastructure that you have is take the IP address off the old machine and put it on the new one, and you can actually still use the same print driver from the old one because all these machines are built out exactly the same. They're just the new thousand. They're the new 2016 model as opposed to the 2010 model. So there will be very little um, IT support on y'all's end to be able to to um, move these into place and to have them working properly. Plus, even if there is IT support that's needed, we would be able to do all that. I guess what I'm trying to say is that this agreement, even with the donated machines, is completely turnkey. We will do all of the setup for the IT department. We will maybe have to consult, like for Veterans Affairs, for example, he's got an old, eight, actually his machine's nine years old, it's a, it's a 207, which means basically the odds of old black and white copier. He's not got it uh, set up to the internet or faxing right now. So we would have to go in and help him with that. If that's part of this agreement. There would be no out-of-pocket expense for the county in that regard. Okay. Well, I'll say that um, these machines do work well. They do what they're supposed to do. It's nice to have everything connected, at least within my office, faxing and uh, connected to the computers. So these are nice machines. Kerry does a great job of maintaining these. This again is a 63 month lease and I'm not going to enter into that contract without your approval. So let me answer that question and then also say something else. Number one, since you're a county and a government entity, you do have a non-appropriation clause in this agreement. So I know this doesn't answer your question, but I want to point this out. If you do lose funding for whatever reason, these machines can be sent back to the leasing company at no charge or cancellation or penalty to you. As far as the 63-month lease goes, this is an f &V lease. You do have the option to purchase this equipment at the end of the lease. That's what I'm doing with these four machines. I'm actually purchasing them for you and then donating them to the actual county. But to your point, I've actually put into the agreement, and I'll have it in writing, that we'll return the equipment to the leasing company if and or when you decide to go with us or you decide to go with another company. So that's always included in your in our government leases is what I'm trying to say. So you don't have any fault. If, if something happens. You have to make the 63 payments, of course, but at the end of those 63 payments, if you want me to come get the equipment, I'll be more than happy to do that. I hope that I, I work my butt off, to make sure. sure that we always keep your business. Um, but at the same time, we understand that, that might be something like that might happen. So yes, you are correct, let me know on the penalty in that regard. What, uh, even if you reduce the number of machines, same thing. Except if we had a reason, we'd had to reduce the number. So let's say that, as far as the non-appropriation clause goes, for all of my uh, local, state, and federal government deals that I do, if for some reason, and of course I'm not in y'all's position, so I don't exactly understand exactly how funding works. So I won't claim to be that. I won't claim to wear that hat. But if you lose funding for whatever reason. Um, I had a nonprofit that lost funding, and we gave the equipment back to the leasing company, and that was just the way it was. Uh, so, in government and nonprofit agencies such as y'all's, if you lost your state funding, federal funding, whatever it may be, that's paying for this copier, and you can prove that on a sheet of paper, 
I can submit that to the leasing company in that machine. I would pick it up and send it back to the leasing company, and there'd be no further obligation. I would point out that I've been doing this for almost 16 years now, and I've never had that actually happen. Uh, I've never had a state or letter, state, local, or federal um, government lose funding for something and not be able to make their payments. But it is in there. By law, it has to be, it has to be signed in the state of Texas. Back uh, w when I worked with your predecessor five years or so ago to renew this, we had several machines that were in several offices that weren't being used. They were being underutilized. We actually reduced the number of machines that were out there, got it down to just what was needed in each department. I feel comfortable at this time that at least where we are right now, we've got the right we've got the right capability machine. It's not overpowering. In other words, we're not paying for a much bigger, more sophisticated piece of equipment than that particular office needs. We're paying for what we need. We previously made a significant reduction in our lease payment back a few years ago. Again, right now, I think we've got the right number of machines. But if things were to change, if we were to eliminate a department or something like that, uh, and that department lost funding, that's, that's what you're referring to. That's correct. Okay. All right. I would ask for your approval to renew this lease. Make the motion we renew the lease. Uh, motion by Commissioner Hinton, second by Commissioner Fields. Uh, any other questions for Kerry? All in favor of approval of this renewal with TLC Office Systems, say aye. Uh, opposed. Kerry, thank you very much for your continued excellent service. Uh, we very much appreciate it. I don't even think about my machine. It's and that's the way I like it. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Item number five: Consider and possibly approve cleaning out the blockage causing flooding on County Road 4210 with permission of the landowner. And Commissioner Fields, why don't you kind of give us an overview of this? I've got an opinion here from John Mark, which you also have. Uh, Mike did run this by John Mark Coburn, our county attorney, just to be sure that he was not doing anything that uh, uh, was inappropriate. So if you'll give us the background on this, and you or I can read this opinion from Mr. Coburn. Okay, what, what we have on County Road 4210 is a dead end road. And then that road uh, it started probably a year or so ago. We got water backing up, uh, but I couldn't see anything from the road where there was blockage on, on this road. Uh, but I knew there was blockage because water was higher than it should normally be. Uh, had a neighbor uh, went down it and took a picture of it, which there is blockage. And I remember, oh, I guess it was about 20, 25 years ago, uh, Tim Tyler, we had a very similar type deal, but it was, you could see it, it was right there. And uh, we were able to clean that out. I checked with Tim and he said it was okay to do that. Then I uh, decided I'd need to go back and get John Mark to look it up. And it does have- i get you in the closer to that It line. does have, uh, the uh, uh, section 254008 uh, uh, regulations of private ditches in county of 100,000 or less, and we're less than 100,000. Basically, what it says, if if we come to the conclusion, if it is determined that the blockage is located in a ditch and connected with the drainage ditch constructed or maintenance by the county, the commissioner's court can order that the county clear the blockage at the county expense. What that's saying is we can take the back hole and, and I think we can do it in an hour, hour and a half. It won't take long. And, uh, but I think also there's some blockage up upstream is on the spans. Buddy McCollum owns this other land. Uh, they don't have any problem uh, with me going on property and getting the blockage out of the ditch because on the upper side it's turning the water and it's going out in the pasture and it's washing the road out below because the uh, uh, obstruction that's in the creek there is not letting it go a normal flow. So I will have to uh, look at that. I do not go on land or do anything without permission from the landowner and that's what it says here. Uh, 
but there is blockage there. What I'm asking the court today is give me permission to go on to this uh, private property with landowner's approval to unstop this blockage where we can get the water flowing the way it should. Pretty simple. Anyone want to help the commissioner out with a motion? I make mo I make motion we go with it. Motion by Commissioner Hinton to allow Commissioner Fields to go on private property to clear a blockage that will improve things on county property. Second. Second by Commissioner Parker. All in favor of allowing this, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Mike, for getting that worked out. Well, I appreciate John Mark. He put in a lot of hours and, and, and researching this, and I knew it was there. I just didn't know where it was at. But here's for the court record. There's a copy of from John Mark Coburn's in his opinion. Item number six is to open and possibly award bids for debris removal. Again, this is debris removal that is in, correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, we have multiple locations where recent rains have pulled in debris that is causing clog problems and other problems that needs to be removed so that we can get uh, waterways open back up and flowing freely and not block any more water that will cause additional damage. And Commissioner uh, Fields and who else took these gentlemen around? Just just you, uh, all of y'all show him some? No. Um, now we have that big pile that we've piled up. Is, is that we'll, we'll get to that. Okay. But as far as this is, what, the, what we decided to do with uh, FEMA's guidance and the understanding that this will qualify for FEMA reimbursement if we do it correctly, and that will be to hire an outside company, a third party, to bring in their equipment and do the removal of this debris that's causing these blockages. And these are multiple locations. Uh, we had at least two uh, bidders that were at least two interested parties that were taken around and shown these various locations. I've only got one, uh, I've only got one bid here. Um, this is from GL Construction. You know who that is? GL Construction. Okay, now here's the signature, some uh, LUM, L-U-M last name. Greg Lum, okay. Uh, here is his verbiage here. Clean up logs and brush washed up against bridges. Load and haul off to designated areas. Provide insurance and equipment, flaggers and traffic control. He's listed out these locations in precinct two. Two bridges on County Road 1220. West New Hope, two bridges on County Road 1070, uh, Black Bottom Road and County Line Road, also Precinct 2, one bridge on County Road 2910, the Fort Sherman Road, and one bridge on County Road 2730, uh, the Blodgett Road. Then in Precinct 3, one bridge on County Road 3260, Stinking Creek, is that the technical name? One bridge on County Road 3445, Haley Bottom. His bid is $8,000 even, with payments to be made upon completion. The one and only. And that County Road should be 3250, not 3260. Any chance he's made a mistake of, a, of another road that he's he just got the number? No, he knows. He, he knows, knows which one it is. I mean, he described the bridge. <laughs> How do y'all feel about that price tag? What were you expecting? That uh, was pretty close. We had some bridges that we could, were able to get to and do some cleaning up, but these 
I've got several of those bridges right there. They are deep. I don't yeah. have the equipment to even reach it. Uh, and I know Mr. Riddle cleaned some up on what we call the John B. Bottom Road. Those bridges were not those bridges were not very high, so he was able to get some of that debris and stuff. But uh, we've got logs and stuff stuck up on there. I, I think it's reasonable. Uh, I don't have a problem with it. Are you confident that Greg Lum can do what you've asked him to do in a reasonable amount of time? Yes. yes. He has the equipment necessary. He does. Have you all talked about locations where he's going to dump? In other words, is he going to take this to uh, county property as opposed to taking it out to the landfill? I've got two places. It'll be going to private property that I'm fixing to uh, uh, send a letter to FEMA basically stating if we can find somebody to chip it, we're going to chip it and the public can have the chips if they want it. Okay, but uh, you've got you've got locations identified? I, I have two locations identified. How many do you have? One. One location identified. And we'll talk about that as far as FEMA and TCEQ requirements on that. But as far as getting the work done here by Mr. Lum, uh, $8,000 bid, I'll entertain a motion to approve that if you think that's the way to go. I make a motion. Motion by Commissioner Hinton to approve, to approve this uh, bid by uh, GL Construction to remove debris. Uh, second by Commissioner Fields. All in favor of approval say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? All right. We will. Whoever talks to him, are you going to be talking to him? I'd like to I'd like to get a copy of his uh, uh, insurance okay. uh, binder to give us proof of that not only liability insurance but work comp insurance okay. before he starts. And they were all told that they yeah. needed to have that. Okay, let's yeah. let's get proof of that just for our auditor's office. Along that same line, discuss and possibly take action on required filings with TCEQ related to debris removal and like we did on Richard. You're, you're, you're well below any threshold at $8,000. Now, if y'all just want to do that as a prudent thing to do, that's for you to consider. He's not asking for any payment until the job is done. Well, the payment bond was, Commissioner Riddle, what was that payment bond threshold? Five thousand. Does that sound right? I it, no. No. But I did. The way I read the rule is that, that you could elect not to get the payment bond. It would just mean that he didn't pay any subs. And that's how he's got the subs. You know? No, he don't. But if he didn't pay the subs, then the subs we have to. couldn't make the county pay. So it was just a, it, we could be self-insured if we wanted to, or we would require a payment bond. That's what okay. That's the way I read it. Probably something you should consider on each and every project, depending upon who you're dealing with, the number of subs that they might be utilizing, with the understanding that you could potentially, you know, have to, uh, you know, pay twice. Okay. Anything else on that item? Um, talking about our required filings with uh, working with FEMA and working with TCEQ, we've got a different set of some requirements that we're subject to and let me run down some of the information i've been talking with brenda johnson with uh with fema and if you are a contract at first she had asked for some uh, payroll information this would be if we were going to use our own employees to do this cleanup but I got her to clarify that if we're using it, uh, using a third party, if you are contracting it out, I do not need the information on the fringe benefits or the forced account labor or equipment. I do not need your payroll policy. That makes sense because we're not utilizing any of our own uh, 
payroll employees. I do need the procurement policy. I have already sent that to her. I need a copy of the contract and invoices from the contractors. Do you all consider that this would be a contract or do you want to have something more elaborate prepared than this proposal once it is signed by the county? What? I mean, what is FEMA right there? Yeah. They didn't I, I, I don't know the answer. I can send I this to her and okay. ask her if this if this is adequate. You show them what you want done. You get a bid on it. That's that is a contract right there. What he'll do it for and not to be paid till he's finished. Okay, well there is a box down here for acceptance of the proposal. Once that acceptance of the proposal is complete, in my opinion, you've got a binding contractual arrangement. Now FEMA may say we need something more. I'll ask that question. I will send her a copy of this and find out that question. Uh, but there are some requirements that, as you heard uh, during our FEMA conversations, if we are going to be using these temporary storage sites, we need to go ahead and register those with uh, TCEQ. Uh, is it your plan that you will chip all this wood we, or we, burn it? Would it ever be transferred? We can get a permit and burn it. Just okay. depending on how much we got and how beneficial. But you don't anticipate having to do any any follow-up, relocation, any of this have to be hauled to the landfill ultimately? In other words, once Greg Lum moves it to your three points, at that point it'll either be chipped and distributed or it will be burned. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. I, uh, I may need you to help me with some of the specific locations when I file this with TCEQ, but let's be in agreement that we are going to do that. And I would like somebody to make a motion that we will abide by TCEQ requirements and FEMA requirements on any and all of this work. Motion. motion by Commissioner Fields, second. second by Commissioner Hinton. And again, that is to uh, make sure that we are in alignment and agreement and um, <coughs> properly abiding by both TCEQ and FEMA requirements on this $8,000 uh, debris removal bid. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. <laughs> Item number eight, consider and possibly approve a request by Health and Human Services to replace the local area network Basically, that's their computer room there at the Health and Human Services building that they utilize that belongs to the county. They're asking that they be able to replace the 1.5 ton air conditioner that services that computer room. And this is for the uh, building at 303 East 11th. This project will be managed and paid for by the tenant Health and Human Services. A uh, letter to the judge here says this is a request to replace the AC unit located in the network room at this facility with a new 1.5 ton high efficiency AC system. All work will uh, resemble current workmanship and decor. If you concur with the above noted modifications, please answer each question on the following page and return. So again, as they often do, Health and Human Services is asking that we allow them to do an upgrade on our property, replacing a air conditioner. Judge, I make a motion we approve the request. Thank you. Motion by Commissioner Hinton for replacement. Second by Commissioner Parker. All in favor of approval, say aye. 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 Item number nine, consider and possibly approve repairs to the Senior Meal Center on Edward Street. At the time I put this on the agenda, I wasn't sure what the extent of those repairs were going to be. Fortunately, it has turned out to be quite simple and, and has actually already been done. James took care of replacing some ceiling tiles. I got a report that they had a mold problem there at the Senior Meal Center, and it turned out to be nothing more than replacing some ceiling tiles there. 
Uh, some of the damage was old, some of it was from recent rains and some leakage there, but it turned out just to be a few ceiling tiles. Those have been replaced uh, by James, and so I'm glad to tell you that we don't have, I thought we were going to maybe have some roof repair work, some paint removal, some mold removal, but we do not have that. Nonetheless, let's go ahead and approve this since I've asked for that here. I'll make a motion we approve it, Judge. Motion by uh, Commissioner Hinton to uh, approve these repairs that have already been done at the Meal Center. Second. Second by Commissioner Riddle. All in favor say aye. 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 Item number 10, uh, this is a uh, repeat from our last meeting. Consider and possibly submit a local transportation project to NET RMA, Northeast Texas Regional Mobility Authority, for possible funding. Uh, since that uh, since this was first on our agenda two weeks ago, I have found out a couple more items. There is a, the potential for up to $400,000 that could be available if we are awarded this money for a project that would um, be approved by Net RMA. We had talked about two or three possible projects. I gave you a copy of a... Uh, a, an email from uh, this was actually from Roger Bell with TxDOT Austin and Bob Ratcliffe back in the fall of last year and this project that I'm throwing out there for your consideration and I've also had follow-up conversations with uh, the Atlanta District Office specifically with Mr. Ratcliffe I'm waiting for some additional follow-up information after uh, a uh, Atlanta district management meeting today. But let me just briefly talk about this project. If you want to read the details, again, you've got a copy there in your office, but this would have to do with improvements made at the US 271, the northern end of our loop, at US 67 and I-30. These were some notes from a feasibility study uh, that I was provided with that basically told me that TxDOT at this time was not planning any significant changes to that north end of the loop where it ties into I-30. We had always talked about spending some possible county money matched with TxDOT money to improve that. They did a study down there and they came up with some suggestions but did not feel that any of those were of immediate necessity. But when I spoke with Mr. Ratcliffe and asked him what projects was he aware of in Titus County that he thought would be a good match for our request from Net RMA. In other words, it needed to be reasonably priced, it needed to be in the not too distant future, and it needed to be something that would be beneficial to Titus County, and of course something that the Atlanta District also felt was a good use of money. And he reminded me of this, and we talked about it, and he, he's not making any firm guarantees, but he felt like if the county could come up with some money from Net RMA and match it with some, uh, some of TxDOT Atlanta's monies, that this might be a good project that could be done in the fairly near future. And these improvements, as spelled out in this memorandum, there are basically four levels. One is we do nothing. We just leave it the way it is. We don't spend any additional money. Uh, I'd, uh, option number two would be about a three to four hundred thousand dollar improvement that would basically be some new um, some signage, some new striping, some division of some existing lanes, possibly uh, some rounded corners at the intersection uh, of the existing access roads and northbound southbound US 271. Option three would be uh, a half diamond at I-30 and US 67, which would bring uh, in an opportunity for trucks coming off of the interstate to have a different exit off of the interstate 
to gain access onto 271 north or south. The price tag on that project was, I want to say, a million, yeah, one, between one and a half and 1.7 million. And then alternative number four would basically be, you know, like Dallas has, a high speed flyover. You come in from Pittsburgh, you just fly right over everything and hop right on to Interstate 30 without uh, slowing down significantly. 41 to $45 million to do something like that. Obviously not, uh, not feasible for us and probably not even necessary at this time. I don't know what TxDOT Atlanta would be willing to do if we got this money from net RMA. Would they be willing to go as high as that alternative three at a cost of one and a half million? I will know more as I talk to uh, Deanne Simmons with TxDOT Atlanta this afternoon. Uh, worst case, let's say that we went with uh, option number two, which has some good, uh, some, some good changes there, I think, in looking over their diagrams that, that, that I believe would help. I'd like it, I really would like that alternative three, but alternative two would be better than taking the no action approach. So I give you that, not necessarily as a request to make a decision on this today, but is this something that you would consider uh, over the other options that we had mentioned a couple of weeks ago? And if so, you may tell me, yes, let's go ahead and tell TxDOT that we are committed to this project, and if we are awarded monies from NetRMA, we would commit them to this project. That's up to you. Extending the, extending the service roads out to the east east side of town, myself. But that's me. Specifically, out there towards Big Tex, from uh, 1402 out towards Big Tex. I mean, that opening that up right through there. Okay. We're in front of the industrial. I will park. tell you, and I've got this in the next couple of items. I was going to kind of give you an update on the first meeting of our I-30 corridor study. That's absolutely one of the most important things that uh, I'm asking TxDOT for. They're in agreement with that. I don't think there's any question that uh, frontage road improvement in Titus County, as well as many other counties up and down the corridor, are something that TxDOT is very much aware of. They're in agreement with. I truly believe that those will be included on uh, recommendations that come out of that corridor study. Will it come quickly enough uh, if we want to divert some money towards that right now? I don't know the answer to that. I can't imagine that they would um, put money quickly into improving frontage roads until the completion of this corridor study. That would just be my guess, and not that anybody has told me that. I just think that they're going to want to have a more comprehensive plan for the corridor before they go and start picking and choosing where are they going to put additional frontage roads. But you're absolutely right. It's a very worthy project. It would certainly help uh, out there in those areas where you're talking about, and it's something that we absolutely need uh, for this community. Well, I think it'd be foolish not to point out that on the loop, even though we're going to get reimbursed the 150, 40, whatever's left, 40 million dollars for the loop, there's a there's an interest payment of about six million dollars a year on the bonds that we sold to buy that loop that we're going to have to pay through 2032, I believe, or 33, of about six million dollars a year in debt to increase our debt. Uh, that's I don't know what percentage of our budget it is, but it's, it's quite a bit. And to increase our debt a large amount for the flyover, which is I'd like to see, but would be might not be prudent at this time for us to do. You, are you talking about that option number four, the the, the Cadillac yeah. plan? Yes, that's I don't I don't think they would ever support that at this time, based upon the traffic patterns and the traffic quantities. They don't think that that is uh, that would be a prudent use of money. 
So do you all want to think on this a couple of more weeks? Do you want to give me the authority to talk seriously with TxDOT about this particular project? But again, those frontage roads, I don't think that they're going to be, I don't think that that's something that's going to be done in the foreseeable near future that would be a good match for this net, net RMA request. In other words, we can't tell net RMA we've got a project that's five plus years out that we would like for you to give us money to. I think that that would reduce the likelihood of us uh, being awarded some of that money. I may be wrong. It wouldn't hurt to, uh, to ask, but I would hate to request funding for the wrong project. And I need to be able to justify that it's that it is imminent. We don't have to do it today, then. I'd like a couple of weeks to look at it. Maybe talk with the city some. Well, what I think I can gain, at least after TxDOT has their management meeting, is what which of these levels would you commit to? And if we were successful at getting that RMA money, what kind of time frame would you commit to? And maybe I can have that answer okay. here for us later. So. Uh, that alone is good enough reason to table this. No, let, let me make sure the RMA, net RMA, what exactly is that? Net RMA is a, um, that is, our, our representative to that is Hudson Old, and net RMA, Regional Mobility Authority, right. is an entity that identifies uh, particular needs in the more rural parts of the state, specifically like in our net RMA, they have been func they have been focusing primarily, in fact, exclusively on the Tyler uh, uh, toll road, and that is still going to probably be the big focus for net RMA in the next few years. But this is the first time I have seen them actually commit some significant money. I mean, I wish it were millions of dollars, but it's not. $400,000 would make a dent. But net RMA's function is uh, to form this union of counties within our area with local representation that discusses local projects, local transportation projects with the money that they generate uh, primarily from, from toll roads. And so that's where a lot of their revenues will be coming from in the in the future, that toll road down there in in Tyler, for one. All right. Uh, that's one of the ones that I talked to Mr. Radcliffe about, and when I threw those out, this was his suggestion. He said, "Sir, are you telling me you could get two to four hundred thousand dollars?" He said, well, if you'll recall, you know, this is one of the things that we believe for a reasonable amount of money, we can make some significant improvements up there at that north end. So he didn't say, oh, no, that's way far out there. This was where he immediately jumped to. Now, that, that's all I can tell you. That's still a priority for us. It's still an important project for uh, for TxDOT Atlanta, but it just hasn't seemed to have gotten the traction that we would have liked for it to have gotten. Now, with Proposition 1 and Proposition 7 money coming online here over the next three years, uh, of course, they're already, they're already calculating how much money that's going to bring in, and they're already making spending plans for that money here. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean there will be more for Titus County available. We'll just continue to have to stand in line and promote that project as one of the as one of the things that's important to us. We've got the money set aside to buy right away, or at least a significant part of that. Well, if you'd like to table it, somebody give me a motion to table. Like a motion to motion table. by yes. Commissioner Fields to table. Second. Second by Commissioner Parker to table item number 10 uh, before we submit a project to net RMA. The deadline for that project, I'll remind you, is April 15th, so we must make this decision at the first meeting in the month of April. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, item number 11, update from fire uh, 
Commission Committee on the Consultant Study. Have you sat in on any meetings here of late related to that consultant? Yes, sir. I, I sat in on one the uh, week before last now. With the consultant, he met with each one of the uh, fire chiefs and or one or two, three members of, of each fire department and talked with them and then, then he talked with uh, uh, four of us from from the committee and uh, just to uh, see what, you know, our feelings were and ask some questions and whatnot. The, uh, uh, he took all the information and has gone back and they're doing some studies and all now on, on that. So hopefully before too long he will will come back and when he does he will present it to us and uh he they're, they're planning on having a couple of a couple of three uh like town hall meetings in order for the public to to attend and and get an idea of what's happening and, and it's something that we are really going to need to promote and get out there to, to the public that you know we would like for them to to attend one of these meetings that uh, to where they can can see what what we come up with and what what there is to, to do okay when you say he met with you he met with you individually or met with the committee or, he, or he what met, that was, was uh, uh four of us that that uh, was there who, the, who were the four and that was that was the first uh he took two days there to meet with with everybody and uh, there were four of us that did have met with him. And, uh, did you even know about that meeting, Commissioner Riddle? No, sir. Okay. First I've heard about it. Well, I, I will say this, that Commissioner, I mean, not Commissioner, Chief McRae did ask me to confirm with you, are you still interested in participating in this? I did tell him that I wanted those to be public meetings if the two of y'all were involved in that, and I have not gotten any requests for a meeting that I was going to have set up here. So, I, you know, I made a commitment that we would make those public meetings. Now, if, are you still interested in participating in that if of we course. have public meetings? Sure. Okay. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remind him of that, that I still, my commissioners would like these to be public meetings. I'll make this courthouse uh, courtroom available and we'll make the uh, recording devices available for that. Okay, well, I, I did get a chance to meet with him as well. Mike Aarons and I met together for a couple of hours with him, and he had a, you know, a lot of questions for us. So I feel good about this guy. He's, uh, he's knowledgeable, experienced. He's, he uh, relates to what our situation is. I'm, I feel good about who we've chosen. Item number 12, update. Update on the I-30 corridor study. Last, um, what day was that, Wednesday? I think it was last Wednesday. We had our first meeting of the I-30 corridor study work group at the Civic Center. We had a large group. We had a uh, great meeting. Uh, judges, mayors um, from all the counties up and down the corridor from the Metroplex on through Royce City, Rockwall, Greenville, Sulphur Springs, Titus County, um, Bowie County, uh, well, I'm trying to think of up there, uh, Morris County were there. We had one of the uh, commissioners from from TxDOT Austin, Jeff Austin, who is a uh, Tyler resident, who is one of the the heads of of all TxDOT, one of the five commissioners, was in attendance at the meeting. He was there with us the whole time, and we had various members uh, from TxDOT, from Austin, from uh, we had the all the engineers that were up and down this corridor. Mr. Ratcliffe was there. Paul Montgomery out of Paris was there. Uh, it was moderated by Jacobs Engineering, the engine, one of the two engineering firms that's participating in this project. It was an excellent kickoff meeting and the uh, priorities that were very clear for Titus County uh, and 
out in our part of the world would be improvement of the frontage road situation, expanded lane counts in areas where they are needed, better access to and from side roads such as 271 uh, business, I mean, not, two, not 271 business, 271 uh, north, the <coughs> north end of the loop. And these were <coughs> common needs up and down. Of course, they're unique to each county depending upon what their particular situation is. But those were the things that uh, come to my mind that were stressed for Titus, talking about Titus County. Now, this is a study that's, you know, where we are working together as a team to identify needs. But those were the specific needs that came up for Titus County. So we'll meet probably uh, five or six times between now and fall. The two engineering firms have already been working on this. They brought us a lot of information, including uh, traffic counts, and identified a lot of the obvious needs, like where there was um, need for resurfacing work, where there was need for bridge uh, enhancements up and down the corridor, where there were needs for uh, better access to, um, again, roads that, uh, that came onto the, uh, onto the interstate freeway. So a great working group, a lot of commitment there, uh, a lot of work's being put into this. The anticipated time frame for this will be maybe shot maybe just shy of one year but we had that first meeting here we'll have future meetings in the uh in different locales anywhere from dallas up to uh, bowie county i think the next one will be at bowie in bowie county again i'm fortunate enough to be the chairman of that working group so it puts us in a great position to uh to express our wishes our needs and to be uh also involved in the in the planning process in the prioritization process so i'll continue to keep you updated on that uh, i'm really i'm really glad that first meeting was here and and uh, you being the chairperson is is a very important thing i really think our service road and our on and off ramps at 67 would come under this area and I think what they have 1.3 billion that they were going to put in the in in these areas but uh, that's the reason I want to go back and look at that and uh, where you have the NETRMA uh, I think the service road and on and off ramp would come more under this interstate 30 deal because I think that's a very practical way of spending some of this money and definitely would help the I-30 well, we're making plans for the next, you know, 50 years on these interstate uh, suggestions, some of which will come to fruition, obviously, a lot quicker. Certain areas will get action more quicker than others. I still think that this project here to help us with um, accident reduction there at the north end of 271 could come uh, very quickly with or without any recommendations from the corridor study. but. Uh, I'm glad that that is underway. I-20s had their course, corridor study completed, and I'm glad that TxDOT has uh, given the resources to do this study. Did, was the city at that meeting, Judge? Yes, uh-huh. Okay. Yes, yeah, Charlie Smith was there, and Mike Aarons was there, Jacob Hatfield was there. The mayor is actually the member of uh, the working group, okay. but I asked uh, Charlie and, and Mike Aarons if they might consider uh, allowing somebody, if, if the mayor was not available, and oftentimes he's not going to be for these meetings, he was not available last Wednesday, that will they always have someone there to represent the city? And, and yes, they will. Mike, I'm quite certain Mike and Charlie will be at those meetings uh, going forward. All right, item number 13, consider and possibly approved travel and seminars. I think every one of these requests comes from Sheriff Ingram. Yes. Okay, let me run through these. First request is to send Captain Fosdick, Martha Bernard, Laura Nobles to uh, 
captain and uh, the, the, he is the captain along with these correction officers send them to the 30th annual Texas Jail Association conference in Austin May 9 10 11 12 13 660 dollars worth of registration 600 dollars worth of meals 1300 dollars worth of hotel taking a county car and the cost of fuel 2650 dollars paid for by the SCAP grant, so we get that one paid for. Next one is to send Brian Davis, corrections officer, to Basic County Corrections Course in Kilgore between the dates of April 18th and 29th, a registration plus test fee cost of $230, $200 worth of meals during that duration taking a county vehicle, about $430 cost there for sending uh, Brian Davis to basic corrections. Next request would be to send Clint Bain, Wayne Minor to troubleshooting aerobic treatment units, obviously septic system training in Sherman on the 9th of April, two, two up registrations at $189 each, two per diems at $40, Total taking a county vehicle, uh, $378 plus $40 plus any fuel cost there. Next request would be to send these sergeants, corporals, and deputies, Craig Brown, Daryl Cooley, Martin Cervantes, and Kenneth Schmidt to K-9 canine encounters training in Pittsburgh, May 17th, $10 registration plus uh, fuel cost $40 total on that one. Um, another group at another date it looks like. They're both canine encounters training but one's in May, one's in April. Does that sound right? Same school, we're just breaking up the group. The second group, Chris Durant, Darian Smith, Matt Cooper, Edgardo Godoy, uh, again canine encounters training in this one is Sulphur Springs. The other one was in Pittsburgh. Again, $10 registration cost each plus the cost of fuel. And then a third group, May 16th, K-9 Encounters Training in Mount Pleasant. All we have here is $40 for the four people that will be attending that. That is all the requests. Motion by Commissioner Fields for approval. Second, Second by Commissioner Hinton. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Item 14, approve oral and written reports. <coughs> We approve the report. Motion by Commissioner Parker for approval on these reports. Second. Second by Commissioner Hinton. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Item 15, consider and possibly approve the Treasurer's report.
motion to approve treasurer's report. Motion by Commissioner Hinton for approval. Second. Second by Commissioner Parker. All in favor say aye. 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 Put your signatures on that. Item 16, approved budget amendments. <laughs> the works in the district clerk's office. What the what? The, the, the district clerk's office where they gave her a, she gave her a raise to make her chief deputy, I believe is what the deal was. And she's paying for it out of her records management money. It's 58 it's and cents. So an adjustment on one individual. Right. Okay. And she's paying for it out of her records management money. So I have to transfer the money from records management to general county. It's 58 cents now, I believe. None of, none of these guys have seen this one then. They have seen. They have seen. Okay. There it is. Okay, I didn't see that stamp. Okay. So, yeah, number nine. All right. So that's the one and only uh, budget adjustment. Just a line item change. No additional monies. Motion by Commissioner Fields. Second. Second by Commissioner Hinton. All in favor say aye. Aye. Item 17, sign pay orders and approve payments. Make a motion to pay our bills. Motion by Commissioner Hinton. Second by Commissioner Parker. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Closing comments. Um, I have nothing that I haven't already talked about. Just a reminder to uh, be looking for your you two, I'll provide for you the TCEQ and FEMA questionnaire so that you can give me some specifics on those locations. I'll get those to you today. They, John did ask for me to write a letter up on my uh, stationery or whatever uh, and, and come and, and basically ask or tell them what, what our plans are for the debris. And I was going to put either chip or with a permit it either be chipped or given to the public or be burned. It would be good if you would uh, if you would write me something up. Okay. I'll type it up for okay. you, just so because because I know that's going to be part of what's needed by yes. TCEQ. Yes. But let's go ahead and get that in in the records as to what our plan is for that debris. Okay, okay. and I'll, I'll I'll do that tonight, and then. Uh, I got together, Miss Carolyn helped me with this, uh, the paper ad where we went out for bids on it, uh, what uh, the bidding process, like on asphalt and stuff, we did that last year, but they needed copies of all that, and I've got all that put together. So it, it, anybody that's going to be doing that, I've got it done. Or like if you have asphalt that washed away and you're going to put asphalt back there, I have the news article, the approval in court, the date, all that material I can put together, so I'll be giving that to John. All right. Anything else? No, sir. Uh, well, uh, I would like to say this. Uh, Tim, I want to thank you and your officers and uh, prisoners. County Road 2300 was probably the dirtiest, filthiest road in the county. Picked up 46 sacks of trash. And I've had probably 20 phone calls this week just thanking. And I said, well, when you see a deputy or you see the Sheriff's Department or Mr. Ingram, thank them because uh, we could not have done that. Uh, but it was pretty bad shape. Really looks nice. There's not a piece of paper on it anywhere. So uh, the people out there really appreciate that. Where Good job. Where are we trying to get um, everyone you guys to turn against get some roads just go back and forth most of the what are you doing? Taking crews out there and and uh, having them pick up trash? Right. There's so many roads in each precinct. What we'll do is we'll take one road off the list and get another one so we can try to get the permission. You know, we'll do recent and try to get take care of everybody as we do back to other roads as a guy. Great. 
It's about a two mile road and 46 bags of trash. That tells you how much trash is on that road. But really, they did a great job, and I just wanted to appreciate y'all doing that. And, and, and I know you alternate. You'll do a road here in this precinct, one here and one there. Just now getting weather that you can get the prisoners out. But we do appreciate it greatly. Okay. Commissioner Riddle. Okay. Commissioner Hinton. Uh, yes, Judge. Uh, I'm going to going to go out on bids on replacing a head wall on County Road 3375 and uh, had to put that in the paper and then uh, just have them get with me on the specifications for the head wall. Uh, that's one of them that had, that had uh, washed out during the flood. You'll get with James and word that oh, however you want to. Yes, okay. And okay. Get that, is that anything that's FEMA reimbursement yes, it eligible? It, it will be, hopefully. Okay. I mean, uh, I don't know how much it's going to cost, but uh, it's going to be a fairly good-sized project. Just remember that as you're talking to these guys, be sure that they understand that their name will be run through the master statewide database, and if for some reason they've got any negative history that will show up they will not be eligible might as well tell them that up front go ahead and get the to... dunn's yeah. number the dunn's number yeah anything else uh I have nothing else at this time okay, jimmy uh, only thing I've got, judges, is uh, I talked to the John from FEMA this morning. He called and needed a couple more items for man. Uh, he's just about got everything worked up on man. Uh, said it looked like right now there was going to be somewhere around twenty nine, thirty thousand dollars that uh, uh, on man. What he's got worked up. He was needing a couple more invoices for. Like Mike was talking about the asphalt, asphalt and, so. and you know where we had bought that and, and our cost and all was on that and, and I told him I had invoices where I bought some back in in January for that purpose, some coal mix and and also some iron ore from seed. So I've just got to get those scanned and sent to him. I told him I'd try to do that today or tomorrow. He said that would be fine. So. All right. Okay. Now, I do have the, all the paperwork on that you where we that. bid it out and all that stuff. Uh, also, Judge, I have uh, uh, some surplus stuff on Ditcher Head that I, that I can't use anymore. Uh, I've got an old bush hog. Uh, do I need to come to the court on that? The different items there. It's, it's, uh, Is there anything any of these guys would be interested in? I don't know. I, I'll Once you put, put together, together a list and let them look at it, but otherwise you're going to be asking to do what? Sell to, that? To sell that. Is that something big enough to list with uh, our Auctioneer Express? No. no. Just going to put an ad in the paper or something? Uh, probably up here at McGonagall's. They, well, that's they what I meant. Circle. Like, yes. McGonagall's yeah. auction. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's get let's get it for the next meeting a list so that we can okay. get the court to approve you yeah. selling that. But let them at least take a look at your list first. Okay. Well, I've got one more thing to it. I just thought about when Mike brought that up. Uh, if my two old patch trucks, I'm fixing to start spending a bunch of money on. If there's nobody interested in the fire truck that's out there, I may look at swapping one of my bids off for that truck if. If uh, the court, unless somebody else wants it or needs it, worse than what I do. Uh, but like I say, mine, I'm fixing that. Program. What fire truck are you talking it's about? It's the one the city had. Oh, it's oh, got, okay. Got, a, got about half the miles on it that, that mine, my pace trucks have got on Both of them have got about 180. You put one of your beds on it? I can switch the beds off on it. That'll really be the only expense I'll have is just swapping the beds. And I think Terry and them may can do it out there, but if they don't have time to, I may have to take it to someone else to let them do it. But okay. Well, order, that'd be good if you can utilize that old truck. I, I want everybody else to have the opportunity. I've talked to Mike and, and uh, Philip a little bit about it. I didn't know if I was interested in it or anything. So, uh, But if they don't, well, I'd like to put that on, on the next meeting to, to be transferred over into my okay. precinct. Just remind me or Carolyn when you're ready to do that. Okay. I think that's all. Motion to adjourn and we'll...
so we'll get you released. Motion by Commissioner uh, Parker and second by Commissioner Hinton to adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone, and we appreciate your attendance.